another another Should game of the Hell Let Loose Fall Seasonal. All right. Uh, I believe we're gonna swap over, right? You will be streaming from our point of view or the war point of view? I'm going to be streaming from your point of view. So you stay with us? Yeah, that's and correct. will be switched on map change. That is correct. Yep. Okay, swap to the setup screen for this. And uh, Burj Khalifa was supposed to be joining me today, but uh, he's currently unavailable, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. He may show up halfway through the stream, but for now, I've just put up the color bars where his name is at, typically where his face is. So uh, doing a bit of a warm-up here. So, uh, uh, as of right now, yes? yes, I'm communicating to my team, so everyone now understands it. Okay, the, the war, he vient de, de stake out tout seul, I think he'll switch. So, um, the Axis team is going to be <laughs> the French players, UFR, and the Allied team will be War. For this match but uh as of right now uh that's swapped because we're still doing a warm-up phase here and uh at the time being there will be a swap i will be staying with ufr and they will swap to axis war will be allies And uh, UFR is primarily French-speaking, and I believe War is primarily Russian-speaking. I'm going to be squad-leading, so uh, that means we'll get the command chatter, but I'm not a French speaker, so I likely won't be understanding most of what people are saying, but uh, that should be fine. And a uh, little bit of military history... Kursk was, in fact, the largest tank battle of World War II. And okay, yes, you yes. Wait a little bit at start of the game to to open a squad, so we don't hit the limit too soon. Yeah, that's fine. I can wait. Thank you. Just messing around with the commander abilities right now. The enemy team is. You will see the, the number of squad de <laughs> de decreasing uh, a little bit, and you will be able to open one. Okay, I'll look out for that. Thank you. So yeah, a bit of military history. The curse. From mighty streamer. I'm from the U.S. All right. All right. Unfortunately. <laughs> Don't say that. Unless you voted for Trump. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> good man, good man. Definitely did not. But yeah, Kursk was the largest tank battle of World War II. Uh, it featured the introduction of the German Panther tank, where they tested the capabilities of it up against the T-34 on Kursk. And it turned out to have quite a few problems, some reliability issues that were fixed with later editions of the tank. I believe it did pretty well against T-34, although I'm not entirely sure. There were a lot of T-34s at Kursk. 
Uh, the T-34 was probably the most mass-produced tank of World War II. Very many of them. The Russians' entire war doctrine was uh, having overwhelming numbers, which isn't exactly represented in Hell Let Loose, but, uh, you know. And I'm going to check on some of the match info. Just so I can make sure everything is correct here. So, yes, this is Losers Round 1. War is the number 16 seed. UFR is the number 8 seed. So UFR will perhaps have a pretty big advantage this game. And on top of that, they will be playing as Axis. And uh, on Kursk, the Axis has a pretty good... If they, get, if they control the center of the map near the windmills over here, they have a pretty good view on the tanks and the Russian spawn. But uh, whether or not they spawn kill remains to be seen. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, we'll see. Holding the windmills is going to be nearly as critical as holding the middle point, whichever middle point that ends up being, if it's Oleg's house or in the center area here. But uh, as is the case with warfare, Taking and holding the middle point tends to have decisive results. And uh, for those of you who tuned in yesterday, I do have motion blur turned off. And I'm going to try and be a little bit... Have a little bit more finesse with the admin camera. Since there were some... Uh, critiques about that, and rightfully so. We've got a T-34 here. And uh, the match has not started yet. match will be starting in about... Uh, should be starting pretty soon here. We'll swap sides once both teams are prepped. And uh, Kursk, of course, being a tanking map, I would, I would think that each side might have a full squad of six for tanking. Might not be the case during setup, but uh, tanks are going to play a big role in this battle because there's a lot of big open fields, uh, such as the case with Kursk. And of course, when you have big open fields, that tends to be favorable for tanks and less so for infantry. It'll be interesting to see uh, tanks hopefully doing some combined arms working together with the infantry in this match today. But uh, generally, on a map like Kursk, uh, tanks are really going to be front and center. And interestingly enough, Kursk being the largest tank battle, still you can only have six armor squads per team. In fact, on Kursk there were, I believe, more tanks than there were infantry for the most part. And uh, many of the trenches on Kursk are actually designed to stop tanks. These trenches aren't... These can typically be rolled over. Trenches like this one right here. But uh, several of these trenches, some much wider ones, in World War II, there was actually a concerted effort to dig anti-tank trenches. Uh, 
uh, specifically to stop tanks. This is one such trench. You can see the uh, the supports here holding it open. Uh, obviously, tanks would not be able to cross that. So, trenches in general tend to be pretty treacherous. Now, there's been there's definitely been some improvements on that front uh, in terms of objects being oh, rolled over by tanks, etc. Bah enfin, c'est le troisième euh, Katusha que j'envoie. <laughs> Et bon, ma chérie. Let's take a look at where the Axis armor is. We've got Lux over here. MG just signed his own death warrant here. <laughs> there it goes. And we're swapping sides. So it looks like uh, this is going to be the real deal here. The signal I've been given is to wait for all the squads to fill up. And then I suppose one squad will be not full, and then I'll be jumping in a squad lead on that one. So we have queen, option, easy jig, king, roger. Don't believe there's... Okay, ST. We will try this. Okay, 20 units. It's not quite happening, because that is the limit. That's the first time I've seen the soft cap on squads happen before. Not entirely sure what's going on here. Got a couple of supports. Uh, I may just have to jump into one of these here. Just go riflemen. And may as well deploy at the center HQ here. Okay, match warm up is still happening. Pop up in the ad admin cam here. Alright, so we've got the match warm up already. There's some commander abilities dropping. We've got trucks ready to go. Turn the highlight mode off. Follow this truck in. So it looks like we have one transport truck with both of the recon squads moving up to Charlie 7. 
We have the other two transport trucks moving straight up into Oleg's house. Got the supply truck coming in on the edge here. And let's see what our risky friends are doing here. Looks like they're starting to jump out of the transport truck. Two transport trucks meeting here. And already, looks like UFR in a decent position to start taking Oleg's house here. Of course, all hell has broken loose. We have the Puma here. Lux taking some shots. Puma's going to be moving up. Probably going to be calling out some positions here for the rest of the team. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. Salt just ended up dying there. Got an AT guy here. pretty sneaky getting into the house like that. There's a PTRS. Let's see what he'll be aiming at here. Definitely one of the tanks out in this direction. Here we go. He's plinking at the, the Lux. Does the Lux see him? Probably not. It's looking for him though. The uh, PTRS definitely powerful enough to take out that Lux after repeated hits. We'll take a little bit of doing. And it looks like that's been denied. And UFR does end up taking Oleg's house. It'll put them at an advantage for the rest of the game. And just realized I need to swap over to the correct overlay here. There we go. It's a little bit of some skirmishing happening over here. Got War Gonzo here. Not sure what Gonzo is able to see from that angle. But uh, he can probably look up and down. Got Soviet MG up here in the yellow house. It's already getting plinked at. Lux is definitely still up and active. Looks like uh, the Soviets are starting to retake Oleg's house as they're moving into the grid squares, G5 and H5. It's going to be a tough position for them, especially coming in in this open field here. Lux absolutely taking no prisoners, providing massive fire support. Do you have a T-34 rolling up here? This could end up being decisive. Looks like that Lux will get taken out by the T-34.
UFR is still doing an excellent job holding down Oleg's house. And here comes the artillery. Let's see who we've got on the enemy artillery back here. The Russian artillery. Here we are back in the artillery pit. We've got War Chewbacca and War Flop 41K. Hoping I pronounced that correctly. Doing some good artillery work there. And artillery shells do have a 20 second flight time. I believe it's actually 24 to be exact. But it is a flat number. So, those are going to be raining down on Oleg's house. Let's see who the artillery is for UFR. Looks like a full artillery outfit. These guys will be a lot more efficient since they each have a loader. Definitely does make a pretty big difference. The thunder of the big guns, of course. Looks like Oleg's house is going to be pretty hotly contested. Salt with the Pepe Shaw. Looks like we have a tank engagement here. Classic T-34 versus Panther. Panther's going to have a difficult time penetrating the front armor of that T-34 and vice versa. got ricochet got something hit the panther and its side armor here and that's gonna be looks like a different tank shot at it unless I'm just blind and that was in fact the uh, t-34 here it's like there's some AT that's gonna be a side armor hit in the engine compartment of Ricochet. T-34 does manage to take out the uh, AT there with the coaxial or the bow MG, one of the two. This is excellent tank support back here. Hanging at a safe distance. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. We've got a couple of Russians caught out against the entire squad. That looks like they're about to... Yep, they just went down here. This is pretty rough. Let's take a look at the uh, support here. And a single assault engaging a squad. He is going to go down. But he took out two guys there. It's pretty good. Definitely some uh, explosives coming in. We've got artillery from both teams just hammering the battlefield on all sides. Uh, that is going to be Katusha rockets incoming. Let's have a look at where those are headed. Straight into Oleg's house. Definitely not the most devastating Katusha strike, but it's good nonetheless. Undoubtedly, the Soviets are going to be pushing in now after dropping those rockets in. Certainly going to be a concerted effort there. We've got German supply drop coming down over at the windmills. 
And as I said before, the windmills, definitely a huge strategic uh, plus to anyone who can cap. We've got a single recon infantry out here from UFR. We'll take out an outpost. And it looks like he's going to head up into the windmill. And he gets killed off. by this gentleman, this support up here. I won't try to pronounce that name because I don't want to be disrespectful. Looks like the Russians do have an IS tank up here. Appears he's looking for targets across the horizon. But uh, generally, if the tanks can get up here, hold a hull down position on windmills. Looks like there is a, a Panther tank incoming. Two tanks certainly see each other. Looks like there's going to be a frontal engagement here. This Panther's really uh, outclassed by that IS-1. IS-1 has a 122mm gun. It's the largest bore gun in the game on any tank. Trading some blows here, mostly non-pens. Misses. This is going to be quite difficult here. Because the IS is certainly hauled down. Panther is going to try and get an angle on him. But uh, takes a shot to the tracks. Ricochets off the front. It's going to be a side armor hit. These tanks are really getting on top of each other now. That is a penetrating hit on the side armor of the IS. And it looks like the IS is going to take out the Panther tank. It's quite decisive there. And uh, Kronos here. Certainly uh, putting in some good work, good tanking work. And let's take a look over here. got a bit of engagement in this trench line. Uh, it's going to be a German bombing run going in. Bleep bloop over here. Definitely trading some fire, but uh, no one has gone down yet. Looks like uh, Mitch over there got taken out. Logic gets hit. He's still up. He's going to try and frag. Let's see where that frag ends up landing. Comes a little bit short. Very tight engagement in this trench. Uh, that looked like a tank shell that landed in there from this uh, T-34 out here. I'm sorry, this is not a T-34. This is an IS. So the Russians then definitely have two IS tanks on the field right now which will give them a pretty big advantage looks like a German supply drop came down over there looks like they will win the engagement in the trench here let's take a look back over at windmills here Still got the other IS. Still a bit of damage here. Both IS tanks are now in a good position. Definitely some shells coming in. We've got uh, we've got a Tiger tank over here. Tiger tank is uh, definitely going to try and go for a kill on the IS up at windmills. We've got a bit of a, a long range engagement here between the two of them. Tiger is going to try and close the ground, close the gap here. Another Katusha strike incoming from the Russians.
dropping supplies back here, I would imagine, for a garrison. Katusha strike hitting this open field. Not exactly a target-rich environment, but they're working with whatever intel they have at the moment. At the very least, they'll give their men the courage to start pushing up. Still quite a bit of a skirmish line here on either side of the trench. Looks like there is a, a bit of a push here from the Russian team. We've got an engineer assisting with repairs on the T-34. And this is where the T-34 shines, being a support vehicle for the infantry. And there's Panther rolling up. Knows the whereabouts of the T-34. He's going to get a side armor hit. T-34 got hit in the tracks. That's some pretty heavy damage there. Got two ATs to the front. And it looks like Panther lining up the shot. And he gets the kill. Very unfortunate for that T-34. Happened to get caught out. But uh, it was good coordination. The AT is distracting. The Panther moving in. Looks like uh, one of the ATs over here is going to be trying to disable the engine on that Panther. He did get a few rear armor hits there. Now that the uh, Panther has overtaken this, there's a lot more infantry support here. As I said, towards the beginning of the match, uh, generally on Kursk, whoever has the better tank support is going to be better off in the long run. Do have an enemy... Do have a Russian tank over here? Get some non-penetrating hits from the uh, Russian PTRS. Uh, the Panther is going to be at an angle good angle. It was a penetration there. Let's see what the Panther's up against. Looks like that was a... Oh, that was an AT gun shooting at him. Still some good work put in for an AT gun. Of course, on Kursk, the Russians did have quite a few AT guns fielded. Panther will be getting repairs now. Some infantry combat here. Looks like a grenade went off. Some very close quarters here in these trenches on Kursk. Spawned in on the outpost. And he's going to go down the assault. Squad lead is... Not sure what the squad lead is doing. I'd imagine he's trying to get an outpost in. This is pretty rough. It's AT, single AT is going to get caught out here. He does take out the rifleman. Does not see the auto rifleman. Auto rifleman does not see him. Wow, assault misses him as well. All right then. Very close quarters in there. There's definitely some more shots going off over here. Another AT gun set up. It's like they're putting rounds on that panther that was over here. Getting some non-penetrating hits. Oh, that's the tiger over here. It's like, uh, this may have been the tiger from earlier. No, this is a different tiger, definitely. You have two tigers 
two German Tigers up at windmills right now. And of course, this Tiger is not going to have an angle here from be behind here. But he's going to try and get some repairs in. More Katusha's incoming this time. Looks like it's going into windmills. This is going to be quite effective, I think. Sniper is just barely able to hang in there. Most everyone else gets wiped out there. And it looks like the Russians are going to be trying to come in from this angle. We've got a couple ATs with them. Got single Tiger here. He has uh, ATs to contend with. His rear armor is facing the um, the Russian Swam, which is a bit disconcerting. I certainly wouldn't want to be in that position if I were that tank commander. He's reorienting himself. And it looks like they're going to try and get a satchel on him. The AT definitely is a satchel loadout, and he gets denied by the friendly AT. He's going to be caught out there. Tiger, however, knows what's going on. The gig is up, and he mows him down with the bow MG and coax MG. Good counterplay there by the Tiger. Satchel would have been quite effective there. Got the two recon teams out here. Two recon units. Spotters. Tiger tank is going to move forward. Shell just whizzed right over him. like that may be from either from one of the AT guns. See what this is shooting at him. No, this is going to be a uh, IS-1. So the IS-1 taking some pot shots at the Tiger up there. That is going to be a hit. Tiger spots him, but it's too late. He is going to get splashed. Excellent play there by the IS tank. Oleg's house. Still not a whole lot of action. Of course, the German team knows that all they have to do is hold this. So far, it looks like uh, most of the pushing has been somewhat disorganized from the from the Russian team here. Infantry are using the tank wrecks as cover. Pretty pretty smart here. Got friendly tiger pushing up on them. Looks like that is going to be a. Uh, don't believe that's a penetrating hit. It's just on the tracks there. Hard to tell what the tiger is shooting at. That's the other thing about Kursk. Any of these are just very long, long distances. It's another IS. He has multiple frontal armor penetrations. He is going to back off. Probably a wise decision. Yeah, he's going to get out and start repairing here.
Tiger is the same idea. Tiger so far is a lot less damage, incurred a lot less incurred a lot less damage. He's gonna move up. I would imagine using the Panther as cover there. He's gonna try and get a bead on the uh, on the enemy vehicles back there again. And they will take out the IS-1 tank. Let's check the map real quick here. Are quite a few garrisons set up. Looks like there's a little bit of testing the waters over here over in defense and depth some close quarters combat Be tank support from the Germans via T-34. Definitely putting some rounds down range there. Some more very tight gameplay here. Let's get taken out by the grenade. There's another panther up here. Looking for targets. Artillery is dropping smoke over on this position, it looks like. Yeah, they were smoking out the AT gun. Panther did take him out. Let's go back to the artillery pit on the Russian team. putting in more rounds, I would imagine. Yeah, they're definitely smoking defense in depth. I believe both teams are smoking defense in depth currently. Open fields in Kursk are always treacherous. But yeah, there is a push happening right now in defense in depth. They are going to try and take and hold. Right now, Camille is the only one in the grid squares. It's like the other ones are pushing up. We 
VT10 scout car coming in. This can be some non penetrating hits. Panther up here, taking some shots, does take out the scout car, he's getting a few ricochets and uh, looks like one hit on the tracks here, will get taken out, More close quarters in the trenches here. Looks like there's a garrison here. Russian team did spawn. They're going to do their best to defend here. This is quite a difficult position to defend. But it looks like they're largely diving into the trenches here. Panzer Shrek going into the trench. Got another garrison spawn like they're all going to roll up. Not quite jumping down into the trenches yet. More Katushas. This time going on to Oleg's house. Pretty tight gameplay in the trenches here. Looks like the MG is going to get flanked from the rear. If he wasn't spotted before, he definitely is now. And it goes down. Good pickup there by the Russian team. going to be, I believe, a frag going out. Yeah. Looks like uh, defense in depth is starting to get capped a bit here. Got the Russian team defending it pretty hard at the moment. UFR is pushing in. Kind of a weird smoke. I guess the smoke shell landed at an angle. Caused the smoke to uh, go up in the air like that. It's kind of funny. Never quite seen that before. There's going to be the high explosive artillery dropping in. It's a really tough position to be in for the Russians.
In fact, what I'd like to do, once the fence in depth gets capped, unless they are able to hold it, I see my current squad is empty, so I may try to take the squad lead just so we can see all the tags being put down by the German team. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that right now. So far, so good, though. I hope you all are enjoying. Unfortunately, Burge is a no-show today, but it happens. Sure, he's got something going on. So now we can hear some command chat happening. Unfortunately, I don't speak French, so I won't be able to comment on the command chat. But it'll be fun for any of you French viewership listening in. like this field out here in the middle of uh, defense in depth is Russians are doing their best to hold this at the moment Looks like the Russian commander is over here bon, le mec a été traité at defense in depth. On a besoin d'un blindé à gauche, commandant. And he will get hit by the artillery. Bad luck for him. On a un IS-5 qui vient de spawner, marqueur prep. The commander does contribute massive cap capture power while inside a point. So, I'm sure he was leveraging that. More smokes being Dans dropped in. Absolutely deadly artillery. On a perdu la garnie sur la défense, messieurs. Bâtard, tu peux m'envoyer un support, s'il te plaît? Je vais essayer d'envoyer un support sur le pression. Merci. La même. Quite devastating artillery here. Looks <coughs> like Hotel Squad did mark a uh, garrison over here. Let's go take euh, a look at Thomas, that. Envoie tes gars pour euh, la défense bord de map dans le Puma, tu les rejoindras après avec le tigre. Ok. Oui. Must have taken it down already. This, of course, is back over at artillery position. Lots of smokes right on top of Oleg's house. C'est pris, mais vous éloignez pas trop pour qu'on ait la visu euh, pas trop longtemps après vous. Supply il roule, coucou les Il roule, il roule. Bon bah, cherchez pas. Pierre qui roule, là, on a la garni euh, F7 qui est en train de finger, on va aller, je vais jeter un coup d'œil avec Camille. 
Venez moi s'il y a un char qui arrive moulin que je vous renvoie des gars pour le défendre. Ça va pour l'instant moulin. Engage des QG de gauche. Garni perdu F7. Pitman engagement here. Ça va sûrement essayer de poser une garnie dans les parages. <coughs> Donc faut faire attention. Ok. Dove's got the AT. Battle of the supports. Il y a un SL sneaky qui veut bien y aller. Reçu, j'y vais. We blew up the support. Je peux m'envoyer des gars. Il spawn sur la P, couché et il rampe tout droit. Ça passe. Definitely lighting them up with the MP40. He's gonna run out of out of luck there. Push his luck a bit. C'est riff les gars pour le tir de Superdassin. Some ouais, tight engagement voir. in these trenches here. Il nous a pris pour ça. On répare et on rattaque. Looks like he's gonna try and peek. Very good play there by the assault. T'es trop haut, Mitou, t'es trop haut. On a de l'artie dispo, c'est possible de balancer sur Fox Infantry H4, KP5 Oui Got the two ah non, MGs here Did get caught out Fumigène aussi, marqueur Charlie dans un second temps, pas d'urgence Sushi, tu, tu peux nous mettre une défense bord de map On y est Ah, merci Barricade, oh. construis un bordel bord de map Ok, pris Merci Avec euh... Euh... Zut Porte belge Coucou, garnison déployée. German team does have a Puma coming up here. Tu peux laisser avancer euh, en défense euh, sur le. Enfin, tu peux laisser euh, un trou sur la euh, hauteur. Tu spawn en D3. En fait, euh, ça passe euh, en rampant. Il a pas de souci. J'arrive dans le point. Puma does spot the transport truck. Je comme on voit les gars. Les Fully get him. It's definitely a hit. It's gonna miss. Yeah, it looks like he's looking for other targets now. We'll get taken out. It's like by another IS tank rolling up here. We peek at our map, we do see there's one tiger up at windmills. So IS, I would imagine, is moving to cover the push over at Oleg's house. Ils ont plus d'infanterie en C4. Combien de temps pour Chincha Dispo. J'ai un char en approche. T34, j'ai un char. Panther. J'envoie la fumée, hein. Tu le veux où, Panthère Euh, c'est quoi, c'est qu'un Panthère Oui. Tiger, of course, is back uh, here. Il y a toujours un IS marqué en Holding down the windmills. Deux minutes. Just gonna get some kills, uh, coax. Ok, c'est pris. Tu peux alterner uh, une explosif, une fumigène. Ok, ça roule. Euh, fait que des... Tu dois avoir la garnie derrière le tas de bois sur marqueur Georges Précis Fumigène. On conteste. Russian commander is over here. Looks like he's mainly just ouais, got his map open. Doing map abilities at the moment. Conteste à 3 les gars. On est en. On est en train de s'occuper de. de... Still quite a lot of skirmishing going on. Defense in depth. Not really been any concerted uh, efforts here to push in. The Russians are doing their best to hold it. Clearly understanding the value of that point. 
sur marqueur de Negan. Il est précis. Ça marche, ça. Do you have a T-34 here? Looks like they spotted the IS tank finally. What they will do about it? What they'll do about it remains to be seen. Besoin d'aide sur le char H4. HQ de gauche, il y a deux chars, un IS1 et un T-34. Crewman is jumping out to repair. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir un char en frontal On est en route, on vient aider la partie au frontal. Parfait. Looks like they have constructed a bunker up here. T'as marqué les chars, t'as fait des palissades sur le bord de map. C'est pris. Pretty decent place for a bunker. Oui, une dièse chartreuse d'arrêter d'avancer. Euh, Clanker, on va faire une chose, tu vas prendre le tigre HQ de droite. Tête de. Ok. Tête de pont, marqueur Mike, marqueur garnison Mike. Enfin, tu tiennes, Jaco, on arrive à, à Cap là. Vous, vous restez avec euh, oui, la tête de pont, je et vous couchez ensemble. Mais c'est un airhead qui va down over there. Ok. Oh, this is going to be a. Continue uh, comme ça. It's going to be a Russian airhead, but it looks like. Looks like it is going to get dismantled here by the enemy team. It's already ouais, overrun. Spotted by commander. Attention, vous êtes en plein dans l'histoire d'artillerie. Hein. Doug, ton AP ping. And the airhead euh, gets denied. Vous pouvez nettoyer les calls. That is a bit rough for the Russian team. The airhead, if it did succeed, would have given them a pretty big advantage pushing into Oleg's house. And it looks like they've begun the cap over at Defense in Depth. Looks like the Russians are going to hold it though. Utilizing these trench lines. Both teams are. Now it's just a game of staying alive. On est en train de se faire enfoncer par marker option. Yep. See who has control of the windmills at the moment. It's like there's no German armor up at windmills. Oh, well, there isn't any more. Do you have an IS-1 on the move out here? I'd imagine he's going to go wide, try and get up to windmills. Commandant, t'as un char pour nous. Vous pouvez coller, vous pouvez coller la chemise sur marqueur infanterie Mike. Il y a un gars devant. La Charlie. Did spot the other IS tank over here. He's going to be rolling up. J'ai perdu le frontal. Not sure if he sees the bunker. There's quite a lot of smoke there. Avec eux, on va revenir. Les squats qui sont mortes, vous réapparaissez en F7. Ça peut être hit on the tracks. From AT. Appelé sur marqueur Charlie. Il va spot the AT, take him out. IS really wants to kill that assault. He's going to turn around after he spots the Panzer's wreck. And he's done for. We're going to try and throw smokes on him. The squad leader here. Getting all up in the tanks grill. And here comes the tiger. It's gonna be quite an engagement here. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Euh, alors tu pars de la part de, la, enfin, de F7 et tu remontes. Watch the penetrating heads. Charlie, c'est bon. Avant qu'on se détruire la grenade. Tiger okay. will get taken out. On commence à prendre de leur Merci, sur la défense. Ouais. Sorry, bâtard. Crew tried to get out for repairs. Did not spot sushi over here. Ray Palmer is getting the vengeance, so for, for the dead crew member. Aya did get taken out. Plein centre ville de Yamki, artillery. Commandant, dès que tu peux, le char de Rocco, marqueur léger. Pat. Bon, euh, les, les gars en char, il nous reste une demi-heure à tenir. Vous allez rester en H7, H8 sur la hauteur et vous tenez au leg. A tout prix. C'est pris. Il y a 5 marqueurs à qui se décale sur le middle. Commandant, vous êtes en tigre à gauche Merci. Le tigre à droite en premier. Timer pour tigre droite Maintenant. Prêté sur H. Deux, deux tigres en même temps, euh, pas le choix, les gars. On prend des tirs de blindés à la Et tu sais nous envoyer quoi alors hein Sushi, tu peux retirer ton marqueur. Un panther dans une minute, grave. On prend, tirs, on prend des tirs de blindés sur l'artillerie. Being pretty hotly contested at the moment. Looks like the windmills are going to get taken by the Russian team. Yes, I'm Marker Rao. Rico mobile en love marker. Uh, Négatif. La tête de pont est valable, elle est tombée juste derrière, euh, derrière défense en profondeur. Interesting to see if that IS tank ever made it up here. Peut-être le moment de faire un truc avec les SL de Rodeo. Ouais. Mais on a, on a trop vu pour pas nous contrôler les Yamkia. Vas-y, bâtard, par là. Q, It's gonna be a Panther over here. Q, ils sont un peu shelling des, at windmills. Des maisons. Tu peux m'envoyer un gars, euh, Jaco On reçoit tu... Le Panther, on t'envoie. Attention, bombardement sur Yamkia, pareil. Thierry, le Panther sera acheté de droite et vous allez défendre l'aigle. On va prendre celui qui Ça marche. Il y en aura un en rab sur, euh, sur H10. Ah non, on a trop de trop de We'll be a German bombing run. On a perdu la, la tranchée au nord de Yakou. Does manage to take out a support, but of course, uh, Nawak, vous êtes as we all know, buildings are bomb proof. Every building in Hell Let Loose is a bomb shelter, so uh, these guys did survive. More skirmishing happening over here in the trenches. The Russian team, in order to pull ahead, is going to have to retake Oleg's house from the Germans. However, they've got pretty stiff defenses here. Germans are trying to secure their victory by taking over defense in depth, which currently is undefended. Got a single automatic rifleman in here, in the strong point. Mr. Dorian. J'ai posé une première question, je vais poser la deuxième. Dans 20 secondes. And here comes Fixer. Will Fixer see him? Oh! Fixer does see him. Marker King, c'est un IS1 également. He's gonna wait, lay him wait for Dorian there. Now he's gonna move up. Logix, t'as les 50 de supply restants. Dorian being followed. 
t'inquiète, je suis en train de faire les rôles sur mon. Euh... It's a support over here, bon, gone cell, on the other side of the trenches. Affirme la peine de tirer moulin, y'a personne quasiment. It's gonna take some shots. Misses, unfortunately. On a un T-34 marqueur prep. Endommagé. Il est planqué derrière la barre. And Dorian is coming in. Does not see the AT. Sees the AT. Pepishaw, definitely more effective than the uh, Sturmgewer at close range. They are going to bandage. They're going to hold. No, no, I don't That single automatic rifleman, though. Did do an excellent job trying to cap. Get right on over back to Oleg's house. AP marqueur prod. E3. It's the commander over here. Wesh, je marcherai pas sur votre rang comme ça, il est. Bon, vous manquez de respect. I can only guess what they're saying. Il est sans actualiser marqueur prod. There's definitely some pushing here in this trench. Exchanging some nades. Surprisingly no kills with the grenades. AT is going to take a moment to bandage himself here. Okay. And he gets back up. Badly outnumbered here. Si il rajoute de droite, si il y en a qui veulent. Yes, un actualisé marqueur prep. Will he pick off the rifleman? He does get the rifleman. It's moving up towards the automatic rifleman. He's got. They're both peeking. Automatic rifleman does take him out. That was a good run, though. MG sat up in the trench here. Tête de point approximative sur les hauteurs. Est-ce qu'il y a un canon qui peut s'en occuper C'est quoi le marqueur Looks like, like a smoke that just went out. Could have been a frag. Ok, reçu. These were definitely frags. Marqueur commandant. L'artiste, tu t'en occupes Il y a un ISA sur le dog sorti. Goes for the underhanded toss with the smoke. He's gonna smoke himself. Automatic rifleman is going to push through the smoke anyway. Blind firing. Did give himself away. Got headshotted. Meanwhile, back over here at the windmills. The dead tanks are piling up. Ils sont en train de déborder, il y a eu une première vague de, de pop sur la, la tête de pont. C'est un panther qui vient de venir ici, vers le spawn. 34 en contournement sur le chien. Et 34 marqués en première. Il y a un char dans le bac Non honneur parmi les Germains. 
as the panther rushes the enemy spawn. Commandant, tu sais balancer un tigre ou pas Of course, I'm joking. I'm not entirely sure why the panther's over here. He is going to get hit though from this C-34. That's a second side armor hit. Q avant poste ennemi F6 KP. T-34 is at a pretty good angle here. Another ricochet. Gets a ricochet on the side armor of the Panther. Both tankers understanding the importance of angling here. That will be a penetrating hit. If I can... There we go. Just had to clip through there. Another ricochet. Looks like the T-34 may only have one penetration on the side armor. It's otherwise doing okay. Crewman is going to get out to repair. It's very risky. Ends up losing it all. Wow. Quite an intense engagement there. Those always are the engagements that haunt my dreams as a tanker, knowing exactly why I lost. This can be a, another Russian IS-1 tank. Let's take a quick peek at the map. It's going to be over here near Oleg's house. He's still a little bit too close to that artillery. Reduced to jello. They're gonna spot the IS-1. Les tanks qui se tirent un char ennemi sur les moulins, je sais pas c'est quoi. Looks like the IS-1 is just gonna be shelling the bunker over here. Bon là on peut avoir un tigre. Tigre maintenant, à de gauche. Merci. Demande d'artillerie, marqueur infanterie quick. So it looks like the Axis do have a Panther over here. In fact, they've got Panther and two Tigers closer to the rear. Panther's in a good position to get side armor hit, potentially. Panther is going to roll up on the IS-1. Perhaps try to flank here. He does see the tank mark. Oh yeah, the Panther is certainly going to try and get an angle here. He is going to see the IS. Does manage a side armor hit on the move. IS knows he's in for it. He's repositioning, but it's too late. Panther does get the kill on the IS. It's an excellent coordination and shooting by the gunner here. 
Let's see how he handles this anti-tank gun in front of him. AT does manage to hit the turret ring. And the Panther does take out the AT gun as well. Quite an ace tank crew here. Vous avez 77. Got one of the Tigers back here providing fire support. Being here up on this hill is any tanker's dream. Got the front armor facing the enemy. Really get to choose whatever targets you want from this position. Same for this tiger up here. He's got pretty good vantage point. They're going to keep the point locked down at Oleg's house. And we are down to the 20 minute mark. Looks like Burge is here. Là, il va y avoir, on va se prendre une grande assaut. Bientôt, il y a plus de char. Quatre chars. La côte, tu peux m'envoyer un, un supply, un supply. Ok, on se sur les gars. Yeah, I'm here. Lay well, Burge. Not a problem. Go ahead and uh, share your video. Still got uh, about 20 minutes left in the match, so oh, hang we'll on. I need to. I need to plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, better late than never, honestly. Yeah, I've been doing the past hour or so without you because, of course, the show must non, go on. But you know, glad you can make it. Easy, tu peux actualiser ton marqueur infanterie. They did get a satchel charge on the IS tank. And that's going to take him out. Excellent satchel placement and coordination there. Did mark a tank out at the spawn again. Yeah, sorry about being late, man. No problem. Fucking ended up being asleep all day. So that's fun. We were up late playing last night, so... Can't really blame you for that. All right, and let's check, make sure everything is looking good. Uh, not quite capped it yet. Oh well, I'm gonna have to prioritize the game here. Le tigre, t'as un nouveau tigre, tu restes en H7. Yeah, no problem. Attention, sushi, ça à gauche de votre bunker. But Burge, obviously you can see this stream, yeah. so... I've been watching for the last... Right, yeah. Uh, it's between, I don't know, a sniper. Some more engagements in the trenches here. So what do you think, Burge? I know you've been watching for the past few minutes. Well, I came in at the time when they were having that one, that standoff, that one v one tank battle, right? The, between the Panther and the um, and the IS. Yeah. Yeah. There've been quite a few of those this game. 
But, uh, but yeah. I can imagine it is Kursk, <laughs> after all. Yeah, um, surprisingly, um, although... I quite liked the uh, warfare down the trench that, that that guy was doing with the uh, pushing through the smoke. Unfortunately, it didn't work in his favour. If he had a bit more people pushing through the smoke with him, it probably would have been a bit more beneficial. Right, for sure. La, les repos et Nawat, vous allez sur défense en profondeur. Looks like for the most part, uh, both teams are struggling a bit. There's a bit of a deadlock. They are trying to secure victory by capping defense in depth. The uh, Germans are. I would imagine that uh, since the uh, game timer is ticking down, the uh, Russians are going to try and move in, see what they can do to take. Take Oleg's house there. You also uh, were raided earlier on as well. Okay. That's always nice. Yeah. Thank you uh, for raiding, by the way, Lapino Detan. I definitely appreciate that. It's always good to have the extra publicity. Um, and of course, this is quite an interesting match so far. Um, aside from the Germans taking the middle point straight away, there have been absolutely no point captures this whole game. Just been a very, uh, nearly a stalemate, in fact. Uh, lots of, both sides trading lots of blows here. To be honest with you though, Kursk is just one of them, um, I've, I've always found Kursk a very solid map to try and uh, gain ground on. I mean, a lot of the time you do find yourself just stuck in the middle. Um, because it's, it's very interesting and difficult to really push across because of all the, the open land. You've got to make use of the trenches. You've got to keep... It's literally just trench warfare. I mean, if you can get your armor to push across, then uh, I would say that's, that's a game winner. But... Yeah, and um, interestingly enough, uh, to that end, I've not seen very much infantry support with the tanks this game. Uh, there's been quite a bit of infantry support with the tanks up over at windmills. But aside from that, it's been largely just uh, tankers trying to, trying to hang back and cover infantry from the rear. I would have expected that uh, more tanks to be pushing up and having infantry go in rank and file behind them. So it looks like there's a bit of a push going on here. Within these I mean, trenches. You're kind of right, but like, I would say it's difficult to do like some kind of combined arms strategy on this map. Yeah. Just because it's just open ground. Right. It'd be very difficult. Yeah, because obviously, uh... I mean, if the tanks moved up, and the infantry took the trenches, like, and it was all coordinated really well, then chances are, yes, they would be able to push through the trenches, no problem. Right. Demande d'artillerie, marqueur, garnison queen. Garnison Mike, détruite. Attention, Terry, la garni ping à côté de toi. Ça avance peut-être sur ton flanc gauche. Messieurs, faites gaffe, il reste 12 minutes. Ne ouais, partez pas trop loin. Yeah, most of the AT guns and uh, tanks been kind of staying back at spawn for the Russians. Uh, doing more long range tank support. We're gonna have another Puma coming up over here. Ah, 
Il reste un mec mieux. allongé derrière la carcasse de, de Panther pour euh, Terry. We've got bleep bloop okay. again. Okay. I've been focusing on bleep bloop a lot this game. It tends to be at the front line a lot. Q prend la tête de pont, je garde le frontal. Reçu. Charlie, je t'envoie un gars. They are going to spot the garrison. Whether or not yeah, they can take it out, it's a different story. I'm starting to think they don't even know he's there. Yeah, he's killing their guys. And he's, he's already seen that Gary. He's trying to push his oh, way Oh, he's going to put a satchel in. That is a satchel right there. That is a good strategy. I believe the garrison will be in the blast radius of that one. He does get killed, but... Too bad we can't see the timer on that satchel. It's going to be ticking down, though. Any time now. Yeah, and there it goes. And it did take out the garrison. Excellent play there by the AT. Okay. Got the assault and the AT over here. Getting ready to push up. Pretty sure they saw him jump into the trench there. He's going to pop out. Modest is uh, up shit creek here. He does get taken out. Uh, His squad lead, desperately trying to hold off. Getting pushed by another squad lead. Throws a frag out, looks like it's going to go a little bit wide of the trench there. The next one landed inside the trench. That should take out the... No, it didn't take him out. Get this one. Yep. Oh no, shit. The other squad lead did. Some very tight gameplay by Fixer here. Living up to his name. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. <laughs> we have Cafe Babe. Uh, that's a programming reference to JavaScript. 0x Cafe Babe is hex, and it's a line of hex that uh, Java actually uses for error handling. We've got single rifleman out here with his gear. He's going to be caught out, potentially. Making good use of the trenches. He does take out the support. Some really good play by this guy. Yeah. Some really good play by Flex. Definitely some tight gameplay. He's going to keep an eye on that trench. No one is coming though at the moment. Let's see what we got over here. There's a supply drop coming down. And it looks like defense in depth was capped. Uh, the Russian team is going to do what they can to retake it now. So they don't have much time to do so. They did put in a supply drop. I believe it. it's right here. Yep. So if they're able to use this supply drop to put up a garrison. in that trench. Yeah, there are. Might get taken out here. There's only three. It's a good push. Squad lead is at the front of the push here, but they really need a garrison in. He's trying to place one now, by the looks of it. I think he's getting shot in the back. It's a bit risky. He's going to try and take out 
Coca-Cola Coca-Cola crepe there. Even if you just have an OP down or something, you know? Unless he's got one in the trench. Yeah, Hell Let Loose is won and lost with yeah, Garrison. Got another squad lead moving up here. Let's take a look and see if they found that supply drop yet. I believe it was in this trench over here. Maybe this one. German supply drop. I believe they did take out the the uh, allied supply drop. It's over here before. Slowly but surely pushing through objectives. Yep. And uh, without a major push with everyone on the point at once. It's going to be very hard to retake defense in depth. Uh, the Russian team recognized this so they're all in at the moment. They've begun to cap artillery position. Already? Starting to look pretty, uh, pretty bleak here. The German team, excellent move taking defense in depth. That's going to be nearly impossible for the Russians to recover from. Looks like they are capping it now. It's been contested. Commander has dropped a reinforce. That will end up being decisive here. Super Meat, the best way to aid the attack. And with four minutes left, there's officially no way they can cap two points consecutively. So it looks like this game will go to the Germans. But it was definitely a valiant effort from the Russian team. And it's up to the commander to try and uh, take back this uh, this cap. Yep. Commander definitely leveraging the cap power that the commander gets. When on point. He is going to contest the point. And wow, what a statement. What a statement made by the German team. Capping defense in depth and potentially capping artillery position here before the end of the game. The uh, the Russians know they've lost at this point, uh, which is quite unfortunate since this is the uh, loser's bracket. Uh, war will be getting eliminated from the tournament after this. But... Uh, as, the, as the number 16 seed, they probably expected an outcome like this, but uh, they certainly did fight hard. I'm going to commend the commander for that one. It's definitely a good game. And let me see if I can... Well from what I saw. Let me see if I can get your thing up here. There we go. Now I got your beautiful face up here, Luke. There we go. Wow, what a game. So what do you think, Burge? Well, from the... Uh, I mean, I know I came in about at the 20... 20 minute mark maybe um i it's hard for me to say because i didn't see the re um the rest of the battle right i mean you or, can always catch the vod but um, the the long the long and short of it is uh 
the German team was able to cap the second point at uh, Oleg's house, and they held that for the entire game. And uh, that ended up being decisive. And then right at the last minute, they decided to uh, take the... They were they were pushing at they were pushing towards defense in depth for quite some time, um, but the Russians were offering enough resistance. I'll go ahead and quit out of Hell Let Loose for now. Um, they did offer quite a quite a lot of resistance there, uh, but ultimately they did get overpowered towards the end of the game, and capping defense in depth with like seven minutes left in the match, there's almost nothing that the Russians can do at that point. Because obviously, if it was just Oleg's house and they were able to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat by capping that right at the end of the game, that that could have potentially worked out for them. But unfortunately, it didn't go that way. And um, yeah, so uh, with this match, the number 16... Seed War is eliminated from the tournament, although um, it's always better luck next time, and uh, that was still some very good gameplay from them. They hold their, they held their own against the number eight seed, UFR, uh, so definitely something to be proud of, and yeah, that's that. I feel like they, uh, the Russians needed a bit more places to spawn on. Personally, yeah, they. Um, I think they were in like toward the end of that game that the spawns were. Uh, they weren't putting as many down. Even that uh, that squad lead that was fighting next to the logs um, when his squad was pushing out of the trenches. You know, I, I mean, I didn't see any sort of OP he put down. He might have put one down. Right. But like he needed to have tried to have put a garrison or OP down at least for his squad to keep continuing that push. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. Um, definitely. Since I didn't see that, then I can't confirm if that happened. Yeah, and it's difficult because uh, because I was on the Axis point of view, I couldn't just open the map and see where the Russian garrisons were. Uh, but, you know, from what I could see, there were very few of them that game. I mean, I, that's from what I could see. I, I may, I may not have seen everything, but that's generally what was going on. Uh, but what, what interests me is that the criticality of Garrison's and how effective each team is with using garrisons is really what's going to take uh, take the victory or the defeat in this case. Um, the the Axis powers did a very good job that game, keeping garrisons up all over on their side of the map. They had like five or six garrisons around Oleg's house, uh, so they were really ready to take it. The tank combat in that game was quite impressive, I have to admit, from both sides. Um, I never got the impression that any of the tankers didn't know what they were doing, because overall it was very solid. Uh, there were a few engagements, obviously, where uh, the tankers were outplayed by the enemy team, but those were generally few and far between. ATs were very effective. Overall, though, a powerful tank game. Uh, which is what I would expect on Kursk. So congrats to both teams for excellent tanking job. And uh, yeah, uh, windmills, of course, that was a really critical point, even though, even though it wasn't an actual strong point. Taking and holding windmills on Kursk uh, is always a big bonus. So... Uh, both teams were contesting that even more than Oleg's house, I would say. So they understood yeah. the importance of uh, windmills. That's the strategy I usually uh, implement any time I play Kursk. If you can capture the windmills as a staging point, you've more or less won the war. Right, right. Because uh, it's like it seems to be like the highest and most probably defended place on the map. So I mean, it's got some good de defense measures in place. So I mean, if you can sit at windmills with a tank. Yeah. And you can keep a couple of squads of infantry up there. 
they're, they're not kicking you off that point. Yeah, and both uh, both squads were trying to do that. Um, Birch, I don't think you were in at this time, but there was a Tiger tank up at uh, up at Windmills, and they managed to get a satchel on him. So, uh, or no, they. Good. I don't. I don't remember if they managed to get a satchel on him. Uh, I think they tried, and then it got denied or something. Um, I'm thinking the satchel that they put on the IS tank, uh, more towards like Oleg's house. Uh, there was an IS over there. He ended up getting satcheled. So, yeah, uh, there was some really tight uh, tank engagements. Um, there was some very tight trench warfare as well. There was lots that of guy infantry. With a satchel. Oh yeah, with the satchel on the open, on the garrison. Yeah, it was, was a really, really good, good play. Move. Yep, yep, I agree. Um, satchels in general, pretty good uh, in those terms. So, yeah, he knew he was gonna die, and he thought, "Fuck it." Well, my, I came up here to do one job and one job only. <laughs> I'm going to continue doing that job even when I'm dead. And he went out in style. So and he did it. He yeah. completed his mission. Yeah, and uh, there was quite a lot of that today. If he was a Viking, he would have gone to Valhalla. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, definitely. Um, but uh, unfortunately, there were no Vikings in Kursk that I know of anyway. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, wow, what a match. I'm, I'm very impressed that the number 16 seed uh, at least really did form some hardy opposition against UFR, the number eight seed. Uh, I mean, definitely a rough match, but still well done uh, to both teams. And war is going to be going home today, sadly, but uh, they've got a lot to be proud of. UFR is going to be moving up uh, to the losers round two. And... They should be up against. I can double check this. Might not be in yet. So UFR is going to be up against the loser of round 16. So that will either be the number 3 seed 5 or the number 6 seed 82nd AD DC. So, yeah. Um, but quite an entertaining match. Glad I could cast it. Luke, better late than never. Uh, <laughs> well, I know I was late to it. I, uh, I ended up sleeping all day. Um, went to, I don't know, I was I was just tired. I mean, last I, night I don't blame didn't you. help. Yeah, uh, uh, but... Burlish and I were putting in some tanking uh, on Hell Let Loose last night with our mutual friend, Canuck. Uh, so that we did was well. fun. We did, we did pretty well that game. I can't say we did as well as some of the tanks that we saw in Kursk today. Those were some really tight engagements. But, uh, yeah, well, anyway. Oh, I saw that tank that took cover behind the uh, the fence in spawn, the Russian tank. Yeah. Um, it was in a really good position there. Obviously, the Panther came across. He was, I don't know what he was doing all the way in the, uh, the Russian spawn. Um, it was kind of a bit of a death wish for him. Um, right. I mean, if you're going to sit in camp or spawn, you should probably do that far away. <laughs> right, and I mean, what interested me is that, that flimsy wooden fence in front of the uh, in front of the T-34 there. Like, he was able to use that as a hull-down position and fire over it with his gun, which to me is just hilarious. Uh, I mean, like, and I'm pretty sure that same crew was in multiple different tanks because originally there was an IS uh, in the exact same position doing the exact same thing there, uh, firing up at a Tiger up at Windmills, and he ended up killing the Tiger that was all the way up there. Uh, but, like, he was able to get down in that hull down position, took out the Tiger up at Windmills, and I guess started pushing up there. Uh, as for the... T-34, I'm pretty sure that was the same squad who did the exact same thing. Panther did try and roll up and uh, take out the um, the tanks behind the spawn there, but it wasn't super effective. So, yeah, overall though, um, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the game that I saw today. 
definitely some pog moments. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, Burge, any closing thoughts? I missed a lot of the game, dude. So, uh, yeah, um, no, fair enough, honestly. Um, I've got nothing else really to add. Yeah, I mean, you can catch the VOD and, uh, it'll be up on YouTube later as well. I'm going to be dropping the links for that in the fall seasonal Discord. And, uh, yeah, so... All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. That was quite a high-octane match on Kursk. And uh, I will not be streaming next week, next weekend, but uh, I might potentially try and reserve a slot on uh, the week afterward. So, um, yeah, but thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. And best of luck to the uh, UFR in the loser's bracket. War, better luck next time, and uh, we will see you all later.